What's going on with KD and the Nets? Well, a couple of things, and I think when you think about Sean Marks, who I think has done an outstanding job as the executive for the Brooklyn Nets, and I like him a lot, uh, I, I think that he's trying to steal headlines here. I mean, New York, unfortunately, is still a Knicks town uh, with James Dolan leading the way. And I shouldn't say unfortunately because I do like the fact that Leon Rose uh, is, is there, and I, I've got confidence that he's going to be able to do some positive things. Uh, but I think that when you look at the Brooklyn Nets, anytime you get to steal headlines, hold the headlines, get the back pages for a few days or whatever the case may be, um, I kind of think that's on Sean Mark's mind, number one. Number two, I think so because I think that it would be foolhardy for Kevin Durant to even think about playing. Understand that you're 30 and 34, you're 22 and a half games under um, out, outside of the first place Milwaukee Bucks at this particular moment in time. If the season were to resume, you'd be the seventh seed. You'd be going up against the Toronto Raptors. I like those guys, Lavert and Dinwiddie and those boys. They can ball, no question about it. But if I'm Kevin Durant, first of all, I want to ensure that I'm 100%. Secondly, I would prefer that Kyrie Irving be there with me. Thirdly, and more importantly, when I come back, I still want to ease my way into it, even though I can average 25 in my sleep, because I truly believe that about Kevin Durant. The reality is, is that the postseason has a level of urgency attached to it. And as a result of that, you might push yourself a bit too hard, a bit too soon, thereby jeopardizing next season. This season is a wash. You ain't winning no damn championship. Chill out. Get yourself 100%. And even if you were to win, it's going to be a huge asterisk attached to this season because of the coronavirus suspending play. All of those things into, taken into consideration, there is no reason on earth for Kevin Durant to come back relatively prematurely. I'm not saying prematurely as if he didn't serve that year because we understand the injury occurred a year ago. But there's such a thing as being in shape and then there's being in basketball shape. And basketball shape is harder to come by, particularly when you're coming back first in postseason action without any regular season action under your belt. I think this is much ado about nothing. If it isn't, it certainly should be because there is no way in hell that Kevin Durant should come back before the start of next season, whether it starts in October or December, like they're discussing. KD is going to do what KD is going to do. It's one of the reasons I have so much respect for this guy because he's unique. You know, he does it his way, and yet he's thin-skinned. You think usually someone who does things their way, they're to hell with what everyone else thinks. He seems to care what everyone else thinks. And I mistook that early on as a weakness somehow until, and, and, and Jay Williams was, was talking about it on our show, and it convinced me. You know, until you start to think about it, yeah, KD cares what, you know, like, why is he arguing with people on Twitter? Because he treats everyone the same. That's a great quality, actually, as a human being, you know? He doesn't care if it's a writer or an NBA executive or a fan. He, he considers everyone human beings. I have a lot of respect for that. And he said even before he won a championship, look, if I don't win a championship, it's not the end of the world. And we want everyone to think like Kobe and Mike and be a killer. That's not him. He, he marches to the beat of his own drum and, and, and kudos to him for that. That extends to the playoffs last year. Where KD, I, I was on this show, Stephen A., and you were saying, oh, he should play it again. I was saying he is risking catastrophic injury because it's obviously an Achilles. No, no, it's a, it's a calf which is attached to the Achilles. And sure enough, the Achilles pops and he's out, jeopardizing exactly as I said, the rest of his prime. But why did he do that? Why did he sacrifice maybe the prime of his career? It was on the altar of pursuing a championship. Championships are precious things. They don't come around every day. And so you even have to really respect that. You know, and he came on, on here on First Take, Stephen A., and he told us, no, it wasn't about pressure from the team or anyone else. It was about his wanting to play, his wanting to win a championship. Would this be the same thing if he came back now, if the Nets were in the playoffs? No. Well, you can look at Michael Jordan, what, what he did when he was coming off catastrophic injury, but he was a young man, and he dropped 63 at Boston Garden, and they were eliminated in the first round. I think if KD comes back, they will likely be eliminated early. I think it's jeopardizing his health at a more advanced age than Jordan was. I would say, KD, I agree with you, sit this out, get fully healthy, and then next year with Kyrie, you mentioned Dinwiddie, you mentioned uh, uh, Levert, DeAndre Jordan, by the way, you... You have a team that is going to challenge the Bucks for supremacy in the East as soon as next season. Don't jeopardize it. You know, if it's the finals, that's one thing. 
First round of the playoffs, that's something else. Don't jeopardize it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.